Leveling Up and Housing Secretary Michael Gove is here in the studio with us this morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Kate. Um, <clears throat> morning's papers, Boris Johnson should shut up and go away. What do you think he should do? Well, uh, again, I've given advice to Boris in the past. He hasn't always necessarily followed my advice, so I'll refrain from offering any advice to him now, except to say two things. Uh, he's made a decision to stand down. Uh, that's a, an individual decision for him, but the work of government goes on. Um, and today, for example, the Prime Minister will be making a series of announcements about the future of technology and how we can make sure that uh, we safeguard people's jobs in this country and safeguard investment. But the other thing that I would also say is, in assessing Boris's career and his contribution to public life, I think it's appropriate to take a balanced view and to recognise that there were significant contributions that Boris made and that we should be grateful for his public service. Previously, you basically suggested that he wasn't fit for office. So. Well, as I say, many of the things that I've said um, and indeed done in the past are there as matters of public You're record. You're not by that now. Well, Boris has made his own decision to stand no, down. but I'm asking you your opinion. Yeah, no, no, and, I, and mine is that um, Boris is someone who has contributed an enormous amount to public life. And now that he's decided to step down, I think it's appropriate that we should take a, a, a balanced and fair view of his contribution. And in doing so, I think that it's only right that we all acknowledge that we wouldn't have had uh, the speed of the vaccine rollout, the fastest in Europe that we did, without Boris's leadership, without him having set up the vaccine task force, without him having recre recruited Kate Bingham for that role. I think it's also the case, every day we look at the the scenes of the war in Ukraine, uh, uh, Boris was the Western leader who was strongest and clearest and earliest in his support for Vladimir Zelensky. And I think it's again important that we acknowledge that contribution well. Do you feel vindicated that uh, when you said he wasn't fit for office? Well, Boris actually then went on to become Prime Minister. He secured a significant election victory for the Conservatives and he resolved the vexed Brexit issue, the logjam in Parliament. So, again, uh, he has a contribution uh, uh, to public life, which uh, uh, all of us, I think, uh, as we assess, can consider as one which has been uh, significant and all of us can be grateful for the good that Boris did while he was in office. Yeah, but he spat the dummy on Friday and talked about kangaroo courts. I mean, hardly appropriate behaviour from a former Prime Minister. Well, Boris will have his own recollection. And I'm not asking him, you're sat in front of no, me, no. I'm asking you. I know, and uh, the critical thing I think is, uh, it's a properly constituted committee of the House of Commons with distinguished and experienced MPs on it. Neither of us have yet read the report, so we'll have to wait and see and, and you know, pass judgement on it later. But no, I, I wouldn't describe uh, the committee as a kangaroo court, not at all. Um, they are still likely to ask for a vote for a suspension of Boris Johnson, even though obviously it's, you know... It doesn't make any difference. Now, would you vote for him to be suspended? Well, I'll, I'll have to read the report, you know, like, like every member of Parliament, uh, because I think all of us will have the opportunity to vote according to our judgment on this matter. Uh, I'll read the report, see what the recommendations are, uh, make up my own mind. We also know that the um, leader of the House of Commons has the position, has the authority to be able to prevent access uh, of Boris Johnson to the Palace of Westminster. Um, would that be a good idea? Um, well, because he's just mischief. He's mischievous. Oh, <laughs> if everyone who is mischievous was barred from the House of Commons, then That's I, what I think... their motives are, I suppose. Well, quite. And I can't uh, look into anyone else's heart and discern what their motives are. Um, you know, the, these are matters for the House of Commons authorities. I, I think it's important that there's a distinction between the government, and I'm a government minister, part of the executive, and what the House of Commons overall decides when it, um, it establishes its own rules. So it's not really for me to tell the House of Commons whether individual X or individual Y should be uh, in the House of Commons or uh, using its facilities. What would be the benefit of him being allowed to continue to use the facilities, given that he's uh, been disparaging about... Um, a democratically elected committee? Well, I think there are two things to say there. The first thing is that it's a tradition that MPs, after they stand down, can still, as, you know, as part of the administration of the, their legacy, the, you know, the work that remains to be done after they've stopped being MP, uh, that uh, the House of Commons facilities, in a limited way, can be available to them. That's a sort of general principle. And when you've got a general principle, if you're going to make an exception to it, then you need to know the reasons why. Uh, we haven't had the uh, committee report yet. Uh, the House of Commons will form that judgment. Uh, and again, I don't think it would be right for me at this stage, just as an individual MP in this case, to, uh, and, and particularly as a government minister, to uh, seek to determine what the House of Commons collectively will decide. Yeah, I mean, it's not, a very, it's not going to be very flattering, though, is it, given that he's thrown his teddy in the corner and talked about a kangaroo court? Well, uh, again, 
I haven't read it, and um, you know Boris but, is clearly uh, under what you know. How could it possibly be flattering? Yeah, well, I think you know Boris's reaction Let's clearly be realistic here. Yeah, quite. Boris's reaction clearly indicates that he feels that uh, it's unfair, and he's been traduced. Um, uh, I can't prejudge that. Um, as you know, I used to be a journalist, and, and one of the things about being a journalist is that you love to anticipate what the next event might be, to speculate, and so on. But I'm no longer a journalist. My responsibility now is to concentrate on government, to respect the difference between government and the House of Commons, and indeed to spend my day to day not necessarily speculating about this particular report, though I will read it, but concentrating on my job. Today, you know, my principal goal is to make sure that research and development money, uh, the uh, investment that the government spends on science is spread across the country so that it's not just in Oxford and Cambridge that we have brilliant science, but also in Newcastle and Manchester as well. OK. Um, you know that he's mischievous at best, Boris Johnson. You've worked very closely with him in the past. He says he's leaving for now. What should we read into that? Well, I think that uh, Boris is someone who, in my observation, likes to keep his options open. And, again, it would be a foolish person who could claim that they had predicted every twist and turn in Boris's political career with absolute accuracy. So I don't know what's in his You've mind. You've him in the back previously, of course, haven't you? Well, I, I've offered um, a, a judgment at various critical points, yes, and... Um, uh, I think, also known as. Well, but people will form their own judgment about uh, uh, what I've said in the past and, uh, and Boris's own record. My judgment about Boris's record is that even though uh, I, I've been, you know, I was obviously critical of him, I nevertheless think in office, and you have to judge people by their actions, in office he was responsible uh, on, as I say. Told me. You yes. told me already. Um, would you support him coming back again? Well, it, it's not a decision for me. It's a decision for him. But as I say, I won't anticipate what's Would going to happen in the future. Would you encourage him to come back? Um, when I've, as you've indicated, when I've offered up Boris advice in the past, uh, he hasn't... He's always been grateful for it, but he hasn't always taken it. So I wouldn't be so presumptuous as to offer advice on that. How surprised were you that he didn't realise that MPs uh, could not sit in the House of Lords? Well, again, uh, I think... The critical thing about the appointments is that uh, Boris made uh, uh, a series of recommendations in the honours list. Those recommendations were then passed on by the Prime Minister to the Independent House of Lords Appointments Committee. Proper process. Then the Appointments Committee sent the list back to the Prime Minister with some names taken off. I don't know the reasons, and because the committee is independent, uh, nor should I. And then the Prime Minister passes that list uh, on to the palace for final approval. So uh, the, you know, the, 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 the details of who might have been on that list and are no longer, I don't know. Uh, all I do know is that, obviously, there were some people who uh, uh, might have been elevated to the House of Lords who haven't been. Should Nicola Sturgeon be suspended from, as an MSP until uh, we discover more? Um, well, I think it's really, again, it's really a matter for the, you know, the SNP. Um, uh, you know, Nicola Sturgeon is not someone with whom I agree on very much, but I worked with her during COVID. My focus is making sure that the UK government and the Scottish government work effectively together for the people of Scotland. Is it back, though? Uh, well, again, again... Continue. She was uh, arrested uh, yesterday. Yeah, and, the, and we both know that there's a live police inquiry. Um, and two other figures have been arrested as well. No, and uh, I think that I shouldn't say anything about her position. Um, uh, my job is to concentrate on working with the current First Minister, whom I'll be seeing later this week, in order to talk to him about how I can help the Scottish people. As I say, separate police inquiry, and uh, you know, I'm old fashioned about this. Uh, People are innocent until proven otherwise. Oh, yeah. OK. Uh, we're out of time, but I wondered if you'd indulge me just uh, with a quick thought. I'll always on... indulge you, okay. <laughs> Our story um, today about RAF food banks. Yes. Thoughts? Well, um, it, it is concerning. Um, I, I have service personnel as constituents. Uh, I've been concerned in the past about the quality of the accommodation they have. Uh, the government continues to provide cost-of-living support to individuals who need it. But if you're working in the armed forces, if you're in the services, then you shouldn't have to have recourse to food banks. I know that defence ministers will be concerned about your reports, will want to investigate and will want to do everything possible to make sure that our men and women in uniform are properly looked after. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Not at all. Thank you, Kate. Thank, Thank you. you.